I'm going to walk through how to fit a first order plus dead time model to data. So for example, uh, this is our data right here, and uh, this is our model, and we're going to try to make those uh, match up. Now, um, if you want to follow along with this exercise and download some of the Python source code, um, just come to the apmonitor.com slash PDC for process dynamics and control. And we're going to be going over this on the right, the FOPDT graphical fit. So go ahead and select that, and it'll bring up this page um, right here where it talks about, uh, first of all, the first order plus dead time model. Uh, this is a common differential equation, uh, single differential equation that can approximate many dynamic systems. Okay, so we're going to go through these steps right here. Um, and uh, we have a simulated um, process here. So what we want to do first of all is uh, come down here to the source code. And if you want to download this and run this, this is in Python, just go ahead and select get the code and then um, you can uh, download it and run it. Okay, so once that um, uh, finishes running, you'll have this plot. So we're going to go through the steps that were shown um, right here these uh, seven steps and uh, let me just go ahead and snip these out and I'll put them next to our plot that we're gonna go ahead and try to fit okay so I'll go ahead and just paste them um, right here okay so we've got these uh, seven steps and actually I'll move them over to the uh, left over or to the right here okay so just so we can see them um, right next to it. Okay, so first of all we want to find the delta y from the step response. Okay, so the delta y is going to be um, you know the output, the change in the output of our system. Okay, so first of all that's just um, right here. This is going to be delta y. Uh, the next thing we want to do is find the delta u from the step response. Okay, the change in the input. Okay, and that's going to be equal to 1. Okay, three and one. And the next one uh, is right here. Calculate the k sub p. Okay, so that's going to be three divided by one, a uh, gain of about three. The next one is to find the apparent dead time from the step response. And the way we do that is um, we just take the tangent here and draw a line down. And then uh, look at where the input change uh, started to where it intersects, okay, the steady state value where that intersects um, this uh, tangent line right here, and this is going to be our apparent dead time. We'll see that's uh, theta p. So we started at about two, and um, went uh, it was about 4.5, okay, so 2.0 to 4.5, okay, so that's a difference of about uh, two and a half. So I'll just say that our parent dead time is about 2.5, and then this has time units. I'm just going to put seconds there. Okay, the next one is to find um, where we get to 63.2% of the, of the delta y. Now, uh, if we take delta y and just multiply it by 0.632, then that equals um, you know, 1.9. Okay, so we need to find out where this crosses 1.9. And we'll just draw a little line over here. Okay, and then the sixth step is to find uh, the time where that, um, that Y response uh, reaches the 0.632. So then I'll just draw a line down here. Okay, so there's uh, step number six. Okay, and that goes to about, uh, you know, 6.8 or so. Okay, so um, the final thing that we need to do, now this is to get our time constant, is to take this point right here, this point, or 6.8, which is equal to the time of 0 0.6, or uh, 6.32, okay, and then subtract it from the, uh, the dead time uh, delta. Okay, so we had this time right here is uh, 6.8 minus 4.5. Okay, so that's going to be uh, 2.3 seconds. 
um, right there. Okay, now that is uh, subtracting off this uh, dead time. Okay, so our time constant is about 2.3 uh, seconds. Okay, so we have our gain, our dead time, and our time constant. So our, our equation is going to look like this then. We're going to have um, tau p dy dt equals minus y plus kp u t minus theta p. This is our dead time, our gain, and our time constant. Okay, so let's go ahead and simulate this and just see how we did. Um, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and go back to that source code. And uh, we'll go ahead and download it and just compare. We'll plug in these three parameters that we got uh, just from our graphical fitting and just see how we, how we did. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and close this, come back to the, uh, to the web page. Okay, now um, you can come down here again. I'm going to see if this is uh, working. It looks like it's still refreshing. Hmm, okay. Looks like, uh, you know what, I think what I'll do is uh, just go ahead and refresh this page. Looks like something isn't working here. Okay, let me just see if I can get this again. Okay. Okay, it's taking just a little bit of time. Normally it's pretty quick on this. Um, the other thing that we can do is just copy this, but uh, that sometimes put it puts in some extra characters there that uh, I'll go ahead and recover the web page. Okay, let me try one more time. Something isn't quite working right with downloading the code. Hopefully you don't have that problem as well. Okay, because what I want to do is... Um, okay, again. Look at that. I'm going to try a different browser, maybe. Um, let's come into uh, Chrome instead of Edge and uh, just try this. Hopefully this won't happen uh, to you. Um, okay, get code. Okay, so there it is uh, right there. Go ahead and copy it. And then I'm going to put it into uh, Spider. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and run it. Um, I'm going to change these um, right here. Let me make this just a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, you know, at the bottom of your code, you can put in some of these parameters. It'll calculate your FOPDT model, and then it'll compare it with this, um, you know, the data points that we had, the black curve. Okay, so um, I'm going to open this back up. We had 3 for our gain, 2.5 for our dead time, and 2.3 for our time constant. Okay, so let me just put those in here. So I'll do 3, and then this was uh, 2.3 and then 2.5 and then let's go ahead and just run this and I'll go ahead and just save it to my desktop okay and then after it runs it'll pop up with a, uh, a curve here and it shows our fit alright um, this one's a little bit small you can also run it in um, you know, if you want to run this in something like IDLE, it'll pop up with a separate plot, or you can do IPython um, uh, and do that one as well. So let's just go ahead and run it in IDLE. Okay, and then after it finishes running, it'll come up with this plot, and uh, it should be compatible with uh, higher versions of Python as well, you know, three and above. But there's our fit right there, and uh, if you're not quite you know, satisfied with it, you can also make some, you know, other modifications, um, you know, come back into your script and uh, just maybe it needs just a little bit more uh, dead time. Okay, so I'm just going to come down here and uh, scroll down so you can compare it after, after the fact. Um, I'm going to maybe dial that up to three and uh, make my time constant just a little bit less. And uh, let me go ahead and close that plot before I run it. Okay, run it one more time and just see if I can get. Okay, so it's again it's a graphical method, so it's kind of approximate. But what we're trying to do is take a um, a more complicated model and fit uh, an approximation to it. Uh, this FOPDT model, um, which in this case does pretty well. Okay, and then the next uh, video that I'm going to show, um, what we'll do is is also go through. Um, an optimization method um, as well. So here is um, here is an optimization fit. 
that we'll do um, as well. Okay, so we did the graphical fit. The next one's going to be this optimization one off to the right.